Hi kids and welcome back to another English class. In the lessons of this week, we are going to use as usual your got it book and we are going to focus on skills. Okay, so for that you will need your got it book of course and we are going to work first, we are going to practice a little bit on page W17, okay? We're going to try to finish the exercise or we're going to do the whole page and we're going to focus on irregular verbs, okay? Remember that exercise number eight, it's a mix of content. It's related to regular verbs and irregular verbs, okay? So, the this video is focused on skills, okay? As I said you before. And we're going to work on pages 36 and 37 okay we're going to focus on reading comprehension skills okay so for that i am going to make here a sum up and we're going to work with this text that is related to the discovery of antarctica okay as you can see here in the pictures here you have another picture and the picture that is uh, over here okay with this big iceberg and this boat over here so we're going to focus now on the first exercise that is related to reading that says number one look at the pictures and underline the keywords in questions then scan the article and find the answer what is the meaning of the word scan we are going to focus on these my written skills okay to understand what is a scan it says scanning the text for specific information some questions ask you to look for specific information in a text. You don't need to read the whole words to find it. Before you, you read the text, read the questions and underline the key words in them. This helps you to find the correct information in the text, of course. Okay, so for that, the first exercise that we're going to do is we're going to pay attention here to the example and says we're going to underline the keywords in the question like for example here you have weather and you have Antarctica okay and you're going to try to find that kind of words in the text so for example we have here uh, Antarctica okay and this is related to the weather so here says that it is very it's very cool and windy and there is snow and ice all the year so of course that is related to the weather so for that you're going to answer that the weather is cold windy and it's snowing in antarctica okay so what are the words that we're going to try to find we're going to underline here we're going to underline winner underline race and underline south pole okay and try to find the answer paying attention to the underlying words or the, to the keywords and try to find the answer in the text i am going to give you like an, a clue it's over here okay in this paragraph and we're going to underline in the second question admire and captain scott and you're going to do the same you're going to find the, you're going to try to find the words in the text and then you're going to answer of course that that kind of that kind of uh, answers we are going to work it on online classes now we are going to focus on these kind of words we have one two three four and for that I am going to use a pink color or actually I'm going to use a yellow one we're going to find here you have the south pole okay, I'm going to make it bigger here you have the south pole here you have frozen Okay. then you have discovery you have it here in the title okay this is a very big one word here you have discovery and the word that is left here is rich okay and this one is here okay rich so what these words means in this kind of text 
try to pay attention that says that discovery of Antarctica is very similar to Spanish. So this it means, what is the translation, or you can find it in the dictionary. Discovery in Spanish it means descubrimiento. Okay. Then you have here frozen, like the movie. Okay. And this frozen it means that is congelado. And then you have South Pole. What it means this in Spanish? Polo Sur. And finally, you have the word reach. Okay. This is mean that uh, they didn't reach, que ellos no alcanzaron. For that reason, reach, alcanzar, lograr también. Could be another word. So after that, we work with that kind of words. What we're going to do now, you can read the text. Okay, and now I am going to put the audio in order that you can read and listen, okay? Unit 3. Skills. Reading. Page 36. Exercise 2. The Discovery of Antarctica. Antarctica is an enormous frozen continent at the South Pole. It's very cold and windy, and there's snow and ice all year. In the 1890s, many explorers went to Antarctica, including the British explorer Ernest Shackleton, Roald Amundsen from Norway, and Nobu Shirase from Japan. Another very famous name in Antarctic history is British explorer Captain Robert Scott. Scott's first expedition began in 1901, but there was terrible weather with strong winds and freezing temperatures. Scott and his men stopped their expedition before they reached the South Pole. Between 1910 and 1912, the Japanese explorer Nobu Shirase and his men went on an expedition in Antarctica. They explored the Edward VII Peninsula but they didn't reach the South Pole. Scott started his second expedition to the South Pole in 1910 too. There was a race between him and Roald Amundsen to reach the South Pole first. Scott and his men arrived there on January 17, 1912, but they found a Norwegian flag and a message from Amundsen. The Norwegian explorer and his men arrived at the South Pole 33 days before Scott. Scott and his men started traveling back to camp. Again, the weather was terrible with strong winds and snow. His men were freezing and hungry, and tragically, everyone died. They were only 18 kilometers from their base camp. There were many Antarctic explorers, but people admire Captain Scott for his courage and determination. He wasn't the winner of the race to the South Pole, but he helped people to understand the extreme weather, geography, and geology of Antarctica. Okay, boys and girls, that now that you already read and listen to text, we are going to do exercise number two, okay? We are going to correct the mistakes in the sentences below. Let's see the example in order that you can understand a little bit better the, this exercise. It says, Antarctica is at the North Pole. That is a correct information? No, it's incorrect. This is a mistake. So you're going to search here. In the text because the text is it's going to help you a lot okay and we're going to fix it antarctica it's at the south pole not at the north pole okay you're going to do the same with each sentence okay from one to six now we'll we we're going to finish that of course in online classes now we're going to focus here on exercise number three okay what we're going to do here, we're going to listen to the radio program and we're going to complete the timetable about the events in the life of the explorer Sir Edmund Hillary, okay? You're going to use the information in the box, so it's, it's going to be not like, I don't know, maybe it's not so difficult 
it would be more difficult if you don't have the information. So here you have, he arrived at the South Pole, he died in New Zealand, he discovered his love of climbing, he helped to build a school and hospital there, he reached the top of the Mount Everest, and he was born in New Zealand. So you are going to order in the timetable, because here you have 1990 to 2008, okay? So you're going to read, uh, you're going to listen now, sorry, and you're going to try to do the exercise. Unit 3. Skills. Listening. Page 37. Exercise 3. Good morning, listeners. Today, we're remembering the world-famous explorer, Sir Edmund Hillary, who died yesterday. Sir Edmund was born in New Zealand in 1919. At school, he was an intelligent pupil and completed elementary school two years early. Then, in 1935, aged 16, he discovered his love of climbing on a school trip to the mountains and completed his first big climb in 1939. He traveled to Nepal to climb in the Himalayan mountains for the first time in 1951. And on a windy May morning in 1953, he became the first person in history to reach the top of Mount Everest. But other things were very important for Sir Edmund, too. After he arrived at the South Pole in 1958, he wanted to help the people of Nepal. In 1962, he began to work there and helped to build schools and hospitals. It's a sad day for climbing, but Sir Edmund leaves behind him some amazing work and discoveries. Sir Edmund Hillary died yesterday on Saturday, January 11th, 2008 in New Zealand. Okay. Remember that if you want to listen one more time, you can rewind the video and listen it again, okay? In order that you can do in a complete form the exercise. I am going to remember you that it's speaking exercise. We're not going to do it because, because it's very difficult to do this kind of activity in, in, in the online format, okay? So that's for the lessons of this week. So I hope that every exercise is clear Remember that if you have doubts or questions, you can write an email, you can ask in online classes, and we're going to be very, very glad to answer that. I hope to see you next week and take care. Bye-bye, kids.